So what I'm going to do uh, with that in mind, I'm going to actually tell you what the title of the sermon is. is, is, is I try to you know, never over-advertise, you under-advertise, right? And that, that's, and that way you don't get yourself in trouble. So uh, 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 when it's not going well, that's the title of the sermon. For Thanksgiving season, when it's not going well. When things aren't going well. Well, you should be used to that, shouldn't you? You should know about that, shouldn't you, in your life when things aren't going well, you know? You know, we always think about we're hoping for that better day, but in the meantime, we got to live life. Isn't that right? You know, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and it's kind of like, you know, because, uh, you know, it's the same old thing. You know, you wash the car and guess what happens? You know, the bird poops on the windshield. You know, you just can't get away from these things, you know, and it and, it, and that's not really a serious thing unless you've got a car like mine. That's not really a serious thing. There are plenty of other serious things that happen in life that really, uh really can uh, uh, really take us down a notch, give us grief. And, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, Christianity isn't, isn't quite as sturdy as we thought it was in our lives and stuff. So so I, I want to, uh, I pray this is an encouragement to you. I want you to go to Acts chapter 16. And, uh, and, uh, and I thought about that song, that gospel song back in the 70s or 80s, that song Through It All by Ray Boltz. And I try not to say a lot about him because he decided he's homosexual after 30 years of marriage and 40 years of Christianity and children and all that. So back in 2008. So, uh, but he wrote a lot of good gospel songs. And I, when I was thinking about this, you know, when things aren't going well, that he had that song, you know, Through It All. You know, and just part of that is, you know, uh, you know, if if I never had a problem, I never, knew, I would never knew, know that God could solve them. So through it all, he's learned to trust in God, learned to trust in His Word, you know, kind of thing. So that was running through my mind, you know, and that tells you my age, you know, because that was being sung, I think, back in the '80s, early '80s, late '70s, early '80s. And uh, But anyway, I should pray. Uh, I'm going to read the entire chapter of Acts chapter 16. That'll be your Bible reading for the week. And so, so even if it takes a little long, you know, at least you, you got your chapter done. Amen? So anyway, we should pray. Lord, just thank you for you. Thank you for this time together uh, that we have in your presence, uh, enjoying the fellowship of one another. We pray, Holy Spirit, you'd work in our lives as, as the Word of God is preached. We pray you help us to get what the Lord God has for us today from his word. Uh, may we hide it in our heart. May we use it in our lives. Uh, that we would uh, honor you and, and be a help to somebody else. And through it too, uh, you know, hold on to that real hope that we have in Christ. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I'm going to read the chapter because I'm not going to make a lot of comment. I'll let the chapter speak for the most part for itself. How's that? Okay. And uh, and he came to Derby and to Lystra. That's the Apostle Paul. I said I wasn't going to talk much. Just so you know, Apostle Paul, Timothy, and Silas. At least the three of them. Maybe Luke, I'm not sure. Then he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was Jewish and believed, but his, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported by the brethren that were in Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised them because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep. That was from the church in Jerusalem. Uh, letters for them. You know, they had questions that they answered for the, for these new believers in their churches. Um, for them, the decrees to keep that were ordained to the apostles and the elders, which are Jerusalem. I guess I should have read the verse instead of explained it. How about that? And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the re, uh, region of Galatia and were fid, forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysia, came uh, down to Troas, and, and in a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. 
And after he'd seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, shortly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which are spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing his prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down at Paul and Silas, before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized he, and all was his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when, and when it was day, the magistrates who sent the sergeants, saying, Let us let those men go. The keeper of the prison told us, saying to Paul, and the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into the prison. And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words, and the magistrates unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them and brought them out and uh, desired uh, them to depart out of the city. And when they went out of the prison and entered in the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren and comforted them, they departed. And I guess if I would park in a verse, it's at midnight, verse 25, at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. As I begin this, let's talk about where we're, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, I read a lot of a lot of uh, names of cities or, or large towns that are in the text. Where are we at geographically? We are in Europe. We are in Europe. That's where this is taking place. We're in Europe. Uh, we're actually in a part of northern Greece that's called Macedonia, and and in Macedonia, that area of Macedonia that's in northern Greece, you have the city of Philippi where there's a church there, and that's where you get that church letter to the Philippians in your New Testament. So in, in northern Greece, you got up here, northern Greece, okay, uh, you got Macedonian area, you got Philippi. Now, if you, I don't know, I forget how many miles it is. I'm not sure how many miles it is. If you go almost directly south, uh, so many miles, it's not, it's not close, okay, you wind up at the city of Athens, if you almost go directly south of the city of Athens and, and you wind up uh, uh, sort of at the, the, the top of the Mediterranean Sea, 
you actually wind up, wind up at the island of Crete. So you kind of have an idea where, where this is at, okay, island of Crete. And Crete is where Titus was the pastor there on that island. That's the book of Titus after First and Second Timothy. He was the pastor of the, of the Christians, the island of, of, of Crete, and the book is named after him. Paul wrote a letter to him. In fact, all the cities and towns mentioned in chapter 16, uh, only four of them are actually in Europe. The rest are in what they used to call Asia Minor and, and, and the, uh, the area of Turkey. And so, it, so they actually started north of Syria. So Syria is here. I'm looking for myself. So, so I should do this. So Syria is here. Okay. Syria is north of Israel, right? Okay. Uh, Syria is here. And then what they did, they traveled, they traveled a little bit north of Syria, and then on an angle, it's northwest, they did an angle from the, the bottom of Turkey all the way corner, near, near the top of Turkey, the end of Turkey over here, and you jump into the continent of Europe, and you're over into Europe, you're in northern Greece, and go up a little bit, there is Macedonia, and there's Philippi. It's like on an angle. They did that, and uh, as they traveled... So you have an idea where we're at, okay? Where we're at historically, it's 49 AD, 49 AD, almost 50 years after the birth of Christ, okay? 49 AD, uh, we're on the Apostle Paul's, we're with the Apostle Paul, his second missionary journey, not his first, his second missionary journey. Like I said, they include Silas and Timothy, I think Luke, but I couldn't tell for sure. I think Luke too, and uh, and and also about where we're at ecclesiastically, you know, about church things. We're in Philippi, where the founding of the first church uh, on the continent of Europe took place, the city of Philippi. Okay, so the gospel is finally out of out of the Jerusalem Samaria area, northern part, the Damascus, Syria. Uh, it was in Asia, and now it's over into. The gospel's over into Europe, okay? So we know where we're at, and uh, uh, let's find out what what we are doing. You said, you already told us it's a missionary journey. What are we doing? We're doing the Lord's work. That's what we have in the text. We're doing the Lord's work. Uh, in fact, it's a calling. And in fact, even though they, they were on a missionary trip, uh, uh, what you have here, remember in the vision, Paul saw a man and said, what, a man of where? Macedonia, come over and help us. And if we read the text again, you'd find out, you'd see again that, that, that the Holy Spirit forbid them to preach the gospel in Asia this time. He wanted them to move on to the continent of Europe. So what we're doing, we're doing the Lord's work. It's a calling. There's a calling by a vision and then specifically by the Holy Spirit. I don't know how that happened in them, but, but Paul, it was very definite. Paul knew the Holy Spirit said, not in Asia this time. I want you to go to Europe. And he said, immediately they decided that's what they're going to do. And that's what they did. So they're doing the Lord's work. It's a calling. It's a course they're going to take. It's a challenge that they will face. And it's, it's a, it's by consent given by God. Okay, this missionary journey has God, God's full approval upon it. Okay, uh, where to be, what to do, and when it is all to be done, when it is all to happen. So in other words, what we have, uh, God is directing this missionary journey to get Paul and his friends that are helping him in the ministry over into Europe, and specifically Macedonia area, Philippi. And so what he's doing, God's getting them in uh, for this particular time, Okay, in the right place, he's getting them to the right people, and uh, he's he has the right plan and the right purpose and the right pursuit for Paul and his friends in this missionary journey. This whole thing is of God, is of God. You know, you see the Holy Spirit redirecting, you know, to get them where, where God wants them to be, and God knows when the time is right. God knows the people that are there. God knows the happenings there, the circumstances and the whole situation to get this where it needs to be for these people to respond to the call of God, the gospel. So, so this is all of God. This is all of God. This is good. And this eventually in the end will get God 
the glory. Because people will be saved, come to Christ, churches will be established, Christians will grow, and the gospel testimony of witness will continue to expand throughout Europe. So, we know where we're at geographically, okay? Uh, we know uh, what we're doing ecclesiastically, you know, we, we got a church going on there in Philippi. Uh, we know uh, what we're doing, we're doing the Lord's work and uh, and next, I want to talk to you about this, okay? So we got all this going on. This is all great stuff. This is all good stuff. And then, and then, why are we in such bad trouble in the middle of the text? All we're doing is what God wants done. We haven't done anything wrong. We haven't done anything criminal. We haven't done anything immoral. We haven't even done anything even questionable. So here we're doing the work of God, okay? God is even working before, before this disaster arrives in our lives, okay? And, 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 and now we find ourselves, why are we in such a bad way when we follow the Lord into this and we're actually doing what he wants Paul and Silas where are they at the Hilton no they're in prison they're unjustly accused they're unjustly arrested I say they're unjustly accosted they're, they're beaten really really bad um you talk about police brutality, you know. This is, this is bad. They're incarcerated now with no medical attention or assistance after they're near beaten to death. Uh, they've got no phone, no, no call to some civil rights ACLU lawyer, you know, for any assistance to get them out of there or to sue the living daylights out of the government. Yeah, they got not, none of that's going on either. They have no sanitary conveniences. Uh, there's no heating, no air conditioning, no lights. And they're sitting there in the darkness, beaten half to death, locked in chains, in the inner dungeon, in the prison. And they have no idea how this is going to turn out. They don't. They don't have any idea how this is going to turn out. They've been beaten unmercifully, chained in darkness. They're past any comfort that they could have had. All because they followed Christ. It looked like they were, they were down, and it looks like they might be done. They might be done. But then there's three things that are evident in the text. The third one you're gonna you're gonna wonder about, but that's okay. So when you're down. When it's all wrong, there's some things we can see in their life that we need to think about in this season of thanksgiving and gratitude. And this week, again, praise to God and honor to God. His mercy, his grace, his power. There's three things I want you to see. Looks like we might be down. It looks like we, we are down, but we might be done. We don't know how it's going to turn out. And you can fit it in your life. You, you've got enough going on. You, you can place this where you want to in your life. Three things I noticed. One, when they decided to, to pray to God. He said, oh, come on, this stuff is too simple. Yeah, you don't know about all that. Yeah, well, I'm just giving you the word of God, argue with God. They prayed to God, verse 25.
uh, they pray to God. Now, you, you have to understand this, okay? You, uh, the Apostle Paul was no hypocrite. And what he wrote to churches to help them in their life in Christ and ministry, don't you think he did those things in his own life? Or believed the same thing for his life? Sure he did. Now this is why, and, and he wrote this to the Philippian believers. Not now, but, but later. He wrote this to Philippian uh, uh, believers later, but this is why he prayed. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be careful. Don't be anxious about anything. Even when you're in jail, half beaten to death, chained up, in darkness, no medical care, no assistance from the outside, no sanitary help, no, just absolutely nothing. He, he said, be careful. Don't, don't be anxious about anything. What? Okay. Let me get there. But in everything, in everything. Even when you're down, it looks like you may be done in everything by prayer, by prayer and supplication with what? With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. That's what they were doing. And he, and he, I'll tell you what, he, he probably wrote that. I know it was divine inspiration, but also I think from experience. And he said, and that's not, it's not over. And what? The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Wow. And then he said, now don't you think he did this in, in prison? I think he did this. This is divine inspiration, but it also is experience. He, he said, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, be any virtue, any, be any praise, think on these things. Say what? Yeah. I think that being the case, that's why he prayed to God. And then he tells them, you know, what you've heard and learned of me, received of me, seen of me, go ahead and do it. The next verse he says, do it for yourself. And the God of peace be with you. So pray to, pray, pray to God. And in the prayer, I think the prayer had supplication, you know, it, it, there, were, there was thanksgiving and, and also the request. Lord, help, help us. Listen, we're at a dead end. We're in trouble. We've got, we've got nobody to turn to except you. And then what they did, what did they do? What's the next thing? Once they got done praying, they griped and complained to one another. Why they ever did this in the first place? I cannot believe this has happened to us. Of all people, we're holy and righteous. We preach the gospel. We're not like all those other miserable sinners. You know? I tithe, I tithe twice a week. I go to church every day, you know. I gave up my favorite sin last year. It's not what he did. They praised God. They sang praises to God. I wonder what God hears from us. <laughs> you know. They sang praises to God. You know, Psalm 69, verse 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. That's what they did. Here's the simple things. Prayer. When you're down and it looks like you may be done. You can put that in, 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 in sickness and in relationships 
in all kinds of difficulties of life or whatever it may be. And you're down and it looks like you might be done. You could put this in the context of, of relationship heartache and break because just you try to do the things God wants you to do in life and people don't appreciate it. In fact, some of them, you can get them pretty downright mad at you and angry. Pray and praise God. Sing praises to God. And magnify Him, you know, with that thanksgiving in, in those songs. And, and don't be shy about it. You don't have to be ashamed about it, okay? The Apostle Paul in Silence Word, it says, when they did this, when they did this, the prisoners heard them. That's usually not what prisoners hear. I know, I used to be a prison chaplain. Okay, everybody in prison, almost everybody in prison is, is innocent. That's right. They're innocent, that's what you hear. I'm innocent. It's the rotten system. It was my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, whatever, you know. And, 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 and I'm innocent. And then you hear a bunch of bad words. Just spew out of bounds. That's not what the prisoners heard that night. They heard prayer to God and songs of praise to the Lord. That's what they heard. Not only did the prisoners hear, hear, hear them, guess who else heard them? God did. God heard them. God heard their prayers. And God heard their praise. And then I, I, don't, I don't know if they were, but I think once you've prayed and you praise God, I, I think it transforms you on the inside. before certain things happen on the outside. Because even when you're down and it looks like you might be done, God is still ministering to you. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> he is. He is. You're in a place of ministry. God's caring for you and ministering to you. And I don't know if they did, but I, I, I kind of put it here. I thought when you, when you pray and you praise... And in that, you express your gratitude to God for who he is and what he's like and what he's done in your life in the past and his promises in his word now and, and his righteousness and holiness and his character never changes so you can depend on him 100% all the time, every time. I think what you should do, you know what you're doing? You're preparing yourself for an answer. You're preparing yourself for a response, for a response, and that's just what happened in our text. You know, the earthquake shows up. It happens. You know, all the prison cells are open, you know, and uh, the place is almost shaking itself apart. God answers. So I say this, when you're, when, you're, when you're down and it looks like you're almost done and you pray and you praise, you should prepare yourself. You know, even though God has spoken to you and helped you and strengthened you, and is teaching you and ministering to you and loving you here, you should prepare for something else that's going to go on too. You have more of an answer going on here with God. In our text, God answered. God answered. God responded. And uh, God responded two ways. In the realm of, the, of our natural state, he did. Okay? And, uh, and also God responded in the realm of your supernatural standing. God cares, God knows, God's watching over, and God's got a plan even though things are like looking really bad. And God responds in both of these ways because uh, I keep going back to that verse, you know, and it means a lot to me as I get, as, I guess as I get older, surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Listen, that actually isn't happening in Paul and Silas' life even when they were down and it looked like they were almost done. Now, all this is happening for the glory of God and the good of others, because once this takes place and they're released and, 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 and things are good, or as they're being released, you know, the Philippian jailer gets saved, his household gets saved, you know, they have baptism down by the river, they have early morning breakfast, they encourage him in the Lord, 
you know, then they go see the believers, some of the believers they led the Lord before and encourage them in their faith before they leave. All this comes down. All God responds to all this for his glory, for the good of others, for the care of those that have followed him. So I'd say this to you, I'm just about done. And so we would sing again. So if you guys want to come up, listen, we're just about through. Listen, so when it's not going well, when it looks like you're down and you may be done, simple things, simple things. Pray. Simple things, sing praises to God. And you can, you can be loud about it if you'd like. You don't have to be embarrassed. You don't have to be ashamed. And if somebody else hears you, you may be in a place where you have no privacy. Somebody else hears you, that's okay. You'll minister to them just like Paul and Silas did to those prisoners. But in that also, you know, internally as God is working with you and in you and through you, you prepare for an answer. Prepare for a response from God. Because you will get an answer. God responds to prayer and praise. Isn't that right? Didn't the Lord say somewhere, knock and something's open? What? The door's open. Ask and what? You what? You receive. I thought so. So for you this morning, when, when, it, when, it, when you're down and it looks like you're done, you know, listen, go ahead and keep the faith. Somebody said this. Oh, I think it was the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy. Uh, go ahead and keep the faith. Go ahead and keep on fighting the good fight, not a bad fight. And we can tangle it up with a lot of bad fights. And it's, no, a good fight. And go ahead and finish your course. And just as Paul and Silas have, have left us with a challenge and encouragement and a hope, you'll be able to do the same thing for others that are coming behind you too. When they witness your life, sometimes when they hear those prayers and hear you sing those praises, I'll tell you what, you can leave them a challenge. They walk in the will of God. Here was to get the gospel out. An encouragement. We had this in Sunday school class to be who you are wherever you were at. Why would you ever change? And to have a lively hope in your God. Because with prayer and praise, God, God hears, God knows, God hears, and God answers. Lord, I pray you'd help us what we've heard this morning. May this encourage us in this time of thanksgiving that we're grateful for God and how he works all things out. Even as we, uh, we, we walk through life and we follow Jesus and we come up to these difficult situations in life. And sometimes we're just saying, I'm innocent. This is not, this is not me. I, I didn't do, you know, the wind up here, but I am. So remember these lessons from what we have today. Pray, praise, and prepare ourselves for God's response.